like 3D Sonic games. If you hear these words, you are probably going to think of games like Sonic Generations, Forces, Lost World or even Frontiers, since they were the most recent games to come out. In my case, Sonic Heroes was the first 3D Sonic game I ever played, so I got a somewhat decent introduction into 3D Sonic. What I didn't know, since I'm only 20 years old as of recording this, is that Sonic had already shifted to a fully 3D plane of existence way back in 1998 with the release of Sonic Adventure. If you watch Sonic content on YouTube, you probably have heard these words at one point in your life. Sonic had a rough transition to 3D. Well, I heard them as well, and for a good period of time I assumed it was true, since I never got the chance to play Sonic Adventure myself. This past week, I decided to give Sonic Adventure a try, and decide for myself if Sonic really did have a rough transition to 3D or not. I want to say right from the beginning that the version I played was Sonic Adventure DX and I played it through Steam, so no, I didn't play it on a Dreamcast. I would also like to add that until now I have only played the Sonic campaign so I haven't gotten around to beating Perfect Chaos. That said, I think I still have enough bases to discuss whether it was a good 3D game or not. Getting into the game, one thing I could not stop myself from doing was immediately compare it to its competitors of the time, most specifically Mario 64, which is a game I have beaten multiple times and absolutely love. Well, right off the bat there is one certain thing I can say that, in my humble opinion, Sonic Adventure didn't need. Cutscenes and voice acting. I get that at the time what Sega was trying to do was use Sonic Adventure as a power showcase of the Dreamcast. But for me, personally, Sonic Adventure's cutscenes and voice acting really didn't hit the spot. The voice didn't sync to the character's lips most of the time, and the dialogue seemed weird and out of place, so I couldn't manage to take it seriously. I would have much rather enjoyed it if Sega would have taken Nintendo's silent approach to 3D games and just focused on the game itself instead of trying to add all of these voices to every character in the game. I am, however, not going to ignore the fact that the voice acting does add some personality to every character. You know nothing, fool! It's Chaos, the god of destruction! <laughs> like Sonic and his cockiness and tail sounding like Kazoo Kid every time he opens his mouth. What happened anyway? You're too good of a pilot to just crash like that. That was a test run using a new prototype propulsion system. It's got a few bugs to iron out. A good thing is that it seems that with games like Sonic Frontiers, Sega now has a tight grasp on what makes for some good Sonic voice acting and I very much enjoy it the way it is right now. The game starts off with Sonic watching Tails crashing his plane and we jump immediately into the widely acclaimed Emerald Coast level. Seeing as this was the first time I ever controlled Sonic in his prime 3D stages, I definitely felt the jank or clunkiness. First of all, Sonic's movement didn't feel omnidirectional to me. It felt like every time I was tilting the joystick, Sonic was moving in one of eight directions like a D-pad is laid out, instead of moving freely through the map. All of Sonic's moves you expect from a 3D Sonic game are here. The spin dash, the homing attack and the ultimate ability of going everywhere except where I'm aiming my joystick towards when the game gets too fast. In all seriousness, as I said, it felt clunky, but despite that I have to admit it really wasn't that bad. If anything, it makes you appreciate how better Sonic 3D games are nowadays and shows you how far we have come since its beginner steps in 3D. Earlier in this video I mentioned Mario 64 as a point of reference. Sonic Adventure released in 1998 with games like Banjo-Kazooie and Ocarina of Time which were masterpieces from the Nintendo 64. If we compare how all of these controlled side to side, none of them were perfect and all of them, with no exceptions, had some flaws. Sonic Adventure is no exception. What I'm trying to say is, for that time, the game was well within bounds of what was expected and I don't think a player at that time would have had the basis to really declare it to be bad when compared to anything that existed. When some people say Sonic had a rough transition to 3D, I can definitely understand it being through the gameplay itself if you have only played modern games like Generations or Frontiers. What I don't think is that it is entirely at fault here. As bad as it may feel controlling Sonic in the beginning, I felt like I easily adapted into this older style of gameplay throughout my playthrough and I even ended up enjoying it quite a bit. Sonic Adventure really rewards players for mastering the short amount of mechanics it has. 
I noticed this once I watched some other people run the game and compared it to how bad my own runs were. That means in 1998, Sonic Adventure, similarly to Mario 64, was already elevating a skill ceiling and giving players the freedom to reach goals by their own means, which is very good when it comes to a 3D platformer. That brings me to the levels themselves. As for the levels, I have to say, Sonic definitely didn't have a rough transition to 3D. I'd like to get it out of the way that when I say levels, I really mean is the linear or action stages, not the open world slash up area you have to traverse every time you want to get to a next story segment. That part sucked. I literally have nothing more to say about it, I genuinely thought it sucked and most of the times was nothing but a pace breaker, which really bored me a lot. Back to levels, and what I was trying to say, I think the levels themselves are what allow for the gameplay to flow better and makes it more enjoyable. The amount of player freedom is crazy, and the fact that different routes allow players to reach the end goal through different playstyles is a really big quality in my POV. If you want to know more about how good these levels complement the gameplay, I would recommend watching King K's video on Sonic Adventure, which is really good and describes the point I'm trying to make way better than I ever could. As I mentioned, Sonic Adventure had a hub world that you had to go around to get the specific story reads, and this leads me to the point where I think Sonic really did have a rough transition to 3D. See, when you think about 2D Sonic games, all you think about is going from left to right as fast as you can and maybe sometimes you have to fight some bosses. With Sonic Adventure, Sega felt like they had to start adding a deeper plot into these games for them to appeal more to the players of that time. Personally, I really didn't like the story. I would have much preferred if they had taken the Sonic Mania route instead. What I mean is I would think Sonic Mania would have been much better had they made it a point A to B game with recreations of the classic levels for the first time in 3D, like Chemical Plant and Green Hill Zone, and maybe after that they could add some new and unique ones like Windy Valley, Twinkle Park and Skydeck. This way Sega could really showcase the power of the Dreamcast, not only by recreating the original levels, but by showing how good they could make new and original levels that honestly really stand out. Now that I've talked about the levels, the story, the cutscenes and the gameplay, let's recap everything real quick and here are my main points that I want you to take out of this video and my personal opinion. First, the voice acting and the cutscenes were really bad in some parts and overall didn't match the quality of the game itself. Second, while janky or clunky, the gameplay definitely isn't bad. I can see why some people would complain if comparing it to contemporary Sonic, but at that time it was what it needed to be. Third, the levels are well thought out and designed and I honestly think they did the game justice in regards to the design, the music and how well they complemented the gameplay itself. Fourth, the story completely sucks and is unnecessary, in my personal opinion, please don't destroy me. So for the final verdict, do I think Sonic had a rough transition to 3D now that I have played Adventure? No, I definitely do not. I think when properly contextualized and when given a fair chance, Sonic Adventure not only was a great game at the time, but still is a game that a Sonic fan can enjoy and a game that shined where it needed to, making Sonic's transition to 3D a somewhat pleasant one to experience back then and today. Well, that's my own opinion and you're free to disagree. If you do, make sure to leave it down in the comments below. Now that I'm becoming somewhat of a Sonic fan, I would love to hear more about what everyone thinks about this game so I can get more knowledge of what the general consensus about them is. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future content. This has been the Retro Den, and I'm out.